Hi, Matt here from Matt Holman Golf. I'd just like to look at chipping today, chipping and pitching fundamentals, some technique. You know, often hear about how to create more spin, consistency of strike, issues with chipping yips and miss hits. I think these are some of the sort of commonalities we, we, we tend to see. And I've been really lucky in my life to have some great short game instruction. I think the biggest two influences for me in my own short game have been one, uh, Michael Walker, and he's been Pete Cowan's assistant for many, many years, teaches many of the European tour players. And, and another great coach in America, James Seekman. Um, and their methods are actually very, very similar. They talk sort of a lot about Seve using the bounce. I'd like to give you some ideas on that method. I really like this. Of course, look, there's different ways to chip and, and pitch. Um, I think this method creates lots of room for error. We're really using the bounce. You know, you guys out in America, or if we say in Spain with lots of Bermuda, if we can sort of use the bounce there, that club will slide through, it won't dig in, and, and certainly makes life much easier. So look, the, the sort of if we said those two distinct methods out there, you have this one method that I was certainly taught, which was sort of a ball back, a hands forward, a lean the shaft, and sort of a, a hinge and a, and a hold. And I would certainly teach that to players, certainly very high handicaps just starting out in their sort of golfing lives. They have no lower body movement at all. It's these huge sort of flicks here. Um, so at least that sort of gives them a chance. It gives them a chance of some shuffling through the ball. That you've got great short game guys doing that, some of the best. Phil Mickelson, definitely sort of a, a, a hinge and holder. And I think when you watch the great short game players for me, I was lucky to watch guys like Seve in their day, Alathabel. Um, they're sort of hybrids. One minute they look like a hinge and a hold player. The next minute they're sort of releasing the club head so that club sort of swinging more like a bunker shot. So I think the great short game players, we end up in that sort of artistry um, sort of style there. Really, they, they're looking at the shot, they're assessing the lie, and they're using different techniques and methods to, depending on, on what they face. But if we say a real simple sort of method, or you're looking for a stock technique, not as comfortable with your short game as you would like, let's try and give you a few fundamentals here. So, you know, we can start with if we said, uh, I'm using a 56 degree here, we've got sort of an, an this M grinds, there's some sort of curve on the bottom there that we can get in that in the future, the, the bounce and, and these sort of how the soles are shaped. To, and there's lots of sort of technicalities that we, we can look at in this game. Um, but if we say for now, on chipping, I like to chip with all the clubs from hybrid to five iron, all the way through to a 58 or lob wedge. Um, but we can take, we, we say a sort of 20 odd meter shot, maybe I can, demonstrate one here. Um, we're going to have a sort of a softest flight, medium height, little bit of spin. Everyone wants to create some spin, so sort of look a, a little bit like that in ter terms of the, the technique. So I think number one, so that's sort of, if we say five to 20 meter pitch shot, stance is going to be quite small, maybe about a two balls width gap maximum. On those small shots, you can even go a little smaller. I feel sometimes when the stance gets very small, it's difficult to use those legs at all. So maybe like a two balls width gap. Let's get that front foot flared out a little bit. What that would do for you is help you rotate for the ball. So there's a lot of advice out there, sort of lock everything down. Sound logic in reality doesn't work. So we've got to use those bigger muscles there, keep the body moving. So quite a small stance, front foot open. Now as we start to turn around from down the line, don't be frightened, you know, one of James's tips here to have a little gap on this left heel, about half a ball's width gap. So the heel line's a little left. And that all helps us sort of in this position here to turn and, and rotate through the shot. Ball position, you can really vary depending on the shot. I don't actually like to have the ball position ever more forward than middle, unless it's sort of th thickest grass and the ball sitting on top and we're really going to sort of nearly have a level angle into the golf ball. Ideally, whenever the ball's on the ground, we need some downwards hit. So it would be smart to have a relatively small stance relative under our sort of 
middle of our ankles for your, our standard shot. For a lower than normal, we can go a little bit off the, 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 the back toe there. So a couple of options depending on the shot. I always like to chip as a general rule with the club face a little open. Even if it's only one degree, that's gonna get that bounce, the bottom of the club head there. I don't know if we can, we can actually see this on the, on the wedge and you have this sort of angle. So the bounce number is just the height of the back of the club relative to the front. So the bottom of the club is not totally flat. The back edge is actually slightly higher than the front edge. And we have a, a 10 degree here. So the back edge is 10 degrees higher or slope relative to the, the front edge. And that's the part of the club we're hitting the ground with. So we're not actually hitting the ground with this leading edge of the club head. That's a zero bounce place there. That club's gonna stick in and dig. Okay, I wanna use the bounce there. So I'm hitting more with the, the back edge of the club, that club face sort of one degree open. That's where you think that sort of chop shot in table tennis or tennis, that's where the spin comes from. It's on plane or fractionally out and across just very slightly with the face keep retaining the loft and that will create that backswing very, very much like your, your sort of table tennis. So we have the face just one degree open for me, ball middle or just back of middle. Uh, the front foot's turned a, a little open. Critical, love this book by Paul Runyon many, many years ago and he talked about pinch. And I was actually, I think Justin Rose doing a clinic recently was talking about, he always thought about the ball position relative to upper body or his left armpit. I like to think of it relative to this sternum line. Center line, there's a bone on the back of our neck, the C7 also. And I like to be in a position here where this sternum line is slightly forward. So our sternum line is going to be nicely out in front of the where our ball position is, that's going to ensure that the club head hits the ground after the ball, our low point's not behind. James would say, you know, creates some sort of steepness there. So for me, that's very, very important. The sternum's in front, the shoulders stay nice and level. We don't want tilting. You're going to hit up on the ball. Another little tip here is my shoulders when I chip are not at 12 o'clock, if we set a straight in a straight line there, they actually point to about 11. And what that will do for you, create that slightly across movement on our chip shot, very so slightly. I like to swing on plane really, but it also will move this low point just out in front a little bit. It moves our low point a little more forward. So short game is so much about setup. Even in these, you can hit one for you, these super little low speed shots, you know, setup is critical. There's all these, these little details here. Another great little tip for you, so I'm sort of throwing the fundamentals at you here. You can have a slightly weaker left hand grip than normal. That will help keep this face a little more open through the hit, use the bounce. But I'll also get the right hand and feel the right hand slightly more on top. Um, and what that will do for you, it will get this right shoulder a little more, it will sort of lengthen the right arm, it places the right, shoulder a little higher, a little more over the ball, and that will help with that strike. It will also place the forearm line a little more left, the face again a little weaker, so we've got our low point nice in front. It's also guaranteeing a constant or consistent ball contact, which is one of your critical factors to, to good short game there. So from there, really a lot about setups. We talked a little bit about grip, ball position middle or just back of middle, weight 60, 40 front side, a little weight front side. But definitely, you know, Stan Utley will talk about this as well, one of the great sort of short game players and coaches on PJ Tour. Really nice level look through the hip line, the shoulder line, the spine. Want any of this sort of tilting movement again. And then from there, Actually, don't be frightened in short game for the body and the weight to actually drift forward a little bit, sort of a mini reverse pivot, sort of a slight stack and tilt feeling. Because what that's going to do for you, it's going to move your low point, the point the club is at its lowest, so it hits the ground and just after a little more forward. And critical in short game is we hit the ground after the ball. So I'm actually going to be in this place, sternum's forward there, shoulder's very level, 
I'm actually a little anti-fundamental, the weight will drift forward and then I leave it forward and just trust to turn and move through. Certainly one of the big influences from Michael was trusting to turn and move through the shot, not being too still. So I think our sort of final thought, haven't really talked about anything about swing play. I would be very fussy. I know Michael would be Pete Cow and James swing plane. So if you, you've all got your sort of modern phones, don't be frightened to video some swings. Draw a line through your shaft there. And very, very important that that club travels up on plane to slightly outside, back down that line. And then we mirror that through with this nice turn. I remember Michael showing me a great little routine here and he pulled the club inside and he often talks about gravity. If gravity is a straight line and I drop the club, the club head falls and hits very much inside behind the ball. He then went ahead and pulled the club very outside and it sort of didn't hit the ball but got much closer. And if we can be perfectly on plane here, which would be up our shaft plane line, and then we drop the club from there, it sort of comes back pretty much to the golf ball. So, you know, I've thrown quite a few ideas at you. There's a couple missing there I haven't talked about. Maybe it's a great one to end on sort of shaft angle. For me, we want just a little shaft angle. We don't need loads and loads, but the key is to control trajectory is the shaft always comes back to its original position. Okay, I don't think we want to be adding lots and lots of angle. We're de lofting it's not going to be consistent. We certainly don't want to be sort of flipping too much. But we just return the shaft back to its original position. And then from there, you can just let the weight of the club swing. I'm trying to let this club swing as much as I can, sort of like a pendulum. So that's the natural swinging motion of the club. Very important that club is nice and toe up. We use the gravity, the weight of the club head, everything moves through. So if that's from a, a very small shot here, so we sort of hit a softish 10 meter or slightly longer out at 20. And all we're doing, if we want to hit a little longer, it's a bit more swing back and a little more swing through. There's a few ideas there. Of course, there's lots of things we can talk about, but you know, please feel free to comment, try these things out. Let me know how you get on. And in future, I'll, I'll try and talk about maybe some of the ideas that I missed. <laughs>